In the news recently, we've had lots of stuff about sexual assault, STDs, affairs, divorce. I mean, all of this really begs the question. Are our society's liberated views with regards to sex really making us happier? I think it's fair to say that some of the most unpopular doctrines of Christianity all relate to sex. Yeah, well, I mean, more or less gives you two options. Either complete faithfulness in marriage mm -hmm. or total lifelong abstinence. Total lifelong abstinence. And, and to, <laughs> to the world, you say that, that, again? that just seems slowly. insane. <laughs> it does, well, that's because it flies in the face of everything we're used to. Whether it's the books we read, the movies we watch, the music we hear, that's not what it talks about. When you're in love, you express it. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just watching a movie recently. These two people, it looks beautiful, they look in love, and then, you know, third or fourth date in, they're sleeping together. That, that long. I was actually about to say, I was about <laughs> to correct myself, it was actually the first night. <laughs> but it makes it look beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it flies in the face, too, of our own desires. Yeah, it's immensely <laughs> inconvenient. It is. Um, you, you, it feels natural. And in, in being someone who the college life is very much this way, this culture, this hookup culture, and being someone who participated in it and, and experienced it and was there, I mean, it leaves you broken. It leaves you empty. It leaves you dissatisfied. It's tempting, but it doesn't bring what you think it's going to bring. I remember you told me uh, an example that John Elridge gave of what happens in the hookup culture. It says, if you want a visual representation of what happens, take one piece of paper, another piece of paper, glue them together, let the glue dry for a little bit, and then try and take the two pieces of paper apart. They end up torn, ripped, yeah. leaving a little bit of themselves with the other. I, I, when I first heard that, I was like, wow, that is so true. It's, it's very vivid. It is. When I started digging into the Christian teaching on sex, it's actually incredibly beautiful. Contrary to what you would hear, it's restrictive, it's against your desires. The teaching is very beautiful, and it's very freeing. Yeah, it frees you to love. But I'm sure for a lot of people, they don't think there's actually anything wrong with the hookup culture. They don't think that anything is off with our sexual instinct. They'll say it feels perfectly natural. <laughs> As if our natural desires have never led us astray. I, you just think about that for two seconds and ask yourself <laughs> if that's a very good argument. I personally look at my own desires. I would love to eat junk food all the time. I would love to have sugary sweets all the time. If I were to actually give in to these, one, I would be a glutton really quickly. And two, you would recognize you don't actually get satisfied when you give in to them. You need more and more and more, and they just leave you empty. They don't provide what you want, but your natural desire says you want more. And you've only got to look at the U.S. obesity statistics to see that that's the case for a lot of people. I'm going to ignore that you highlighted the U.S. there and not pointing out England. The U.S. is winning on this one. We're catching up, <laughs> but you guys are ahead. That's because we win at everything. Good grief. Whether it's good or bad, we go <laughs> hard. <laughs> well, congratulations. You're doing, you're doing really well on this. But, I mean, if our food instinct can go so wrong, I mean, our sex instinct is just off the charts. Because if we gave our sexual instinct free reign, one man could populate a village in a weekend. Like, and maybe if you look like Ryan Reynolds, you could. Maybe. <laughs> but it, the point is, it's not about nature versus Christianity. It's about nature, our sexual instinct, versus some set of principles. And all we're saying is that the Christian principles are the best principles. They're the ones that make the most sense of sex, and they lead to the greatest happiness in the long run. Yeah. I remember in Mere Christianity, Lewis gives a wonderful example, bringing together food and sex. He says that it's very easy to get a group of guys together to watch a woman take her clothes off, a striptease. He says, that's really easy. He says, what would you think of a society where it was easy to get a group of guys together to watch a, a piece of meat, a, a steak, slowly revealed from underneath a napkin? A steak tease, if you will. I mean, what would you think about a society where people would want to watch that? My first thought would be, something's gone completely wrong with their, their food instinct. Mm -hmm. But I would actually go a step further and say, I feel bad for them. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed a very good filet mignon at a delicious steakhouse. 
And that's when, if that's all they're getting from it, that's sad. They're missing the true beauty of what a steak was made for. And yet porn is completely normalized. Yeah. They're like the worst thing, it trains us to take people and reduce them to objects, something and to be stared at, something to use, rather than a person to be loved. Yeah, there's no self-giving there. No, and we have, I mean, in San Diego, we've got so many gentlemen's clubs. Mm. That surprised me when I moved here. Yeah, and I don't see a whole lot of gentlemanly behavior. <laughs> no, I I've, I've, never, I've never driven past one and seen somebody holding open a door. <laughs> it, it amazes me, too, that you go to a gentleman club and you're essentially paying to to be frustrated, mm. more or less. Like, you're completely paying for something that's a, a, unbelievably inferior to what truly is out there. And that's just a small part of the larger culture. Yeah. In the news recently, we've had lots of stuff about sexual assault, STDs, affairs, divorce. I mean, all of this really begs the question. Are our society's liberated views with regards to sex really making us happier? Yeah, we're, we're here today talking about it from a Christian perspective and hopefully going to discuss the beauty of it and the freeing nature of it. But you don't even have to take this from a Christian perspective. Just look at where our culture has gotten and ask yourselves, is the current way we view sex in this liberated, free way really actually freeing? Yeah. And we do need to be careful because we don't want to come across bashing sex no. by any stretch of imagination. If you're a Christian, you glorify it. I, mean, I we would say it. even more than the, than the culture. Completely. But we have such a respect for the beauty of it, what it was truly meant for. And that's what we're trying to hold on to, but it has to be done in the right way. That's the key. Nothing to be ashamed of, but it has to be done in the right way. And you're, here you're talking about chastity. Yeah, and, and, and chastity, what's funny is chastity is a virtue. Mm -hmm. like, like fortitude, like courage. Patience. Patience. <laughs> Patience. Yet, we don't seem to see it that way anymore today. No, I think everybody thinks it's good to be courageous, to be patient. I don't think everybody thinks it's a good thing to be chaste. No, and I think that's because we don't understand what chastity really is and how beautiful it really is, how freeing it is. Chastity, at its core, it's not just abstinence. No. Because you're called to be chaste in the Christian faith, whether you're married or single. Mm -hmm. And so it's not saying you have to be abstinent when you're married. So clearly chastity is more than that. Chastity is about loving a person in the right way, mm -hmm. that self-giving, that emptying. And that's why when you're understanding chastity and you're understanding the beauty of that teaching, you have to look at marriage first and ask yourself, what is marriage? Well, marriage is this ultimate self-emptying in the same way Jesus did on this cross, the self-giving of the spouse in you. And that's spiritually, that's emotionally, and that's physically. And all of that comes together in the sexual union. And so if you're living an unchaste life, you're not loving to the fullest. Mm -hmm. But like every virtue, it's something that requires effort. It does. It's difficult, of course. But why is it difficult? One, we have to actually want it. And I think of St. Augustine here. Mm -hmm. St. Augustine... We've mentioned before, but if, if, if people aren't familiar with St. Augustine, he, he lived for the world and achieved the world. And actually, his sexual sin was a big part of his life. He was, uh, had a mistress. And then, obviously, he became a saint. And, he, and his journey to coming to Christ, there was a point where he would pray to God. And he said, in my head, I was saying, God, make me chaste. Give me chastity. And then he recognized, but in my heart, I was saying, but just not yet. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe tomorrow. And it's natural. But what we realize of why it's so difficult is, one, we think it's impossible. It, it, today, it actually, it, you, would, you, you get that sense that chastity is impossible. Uh, and also that it's an unnatural state of life. It's exactly right. And, and it's not impossible. No. And it's, we only think it's natural because we've filled our heads with all of the media from the movies and the, yes. and the music that, and the porn that tells us that, no, your, your impulses should all be, all be released. They should, they should be given their free reign. Yep. Uh, but also, we think it's impossible when it's just hard. Of course. It's, it's hard, but it's not impossible. And anything that's beautiful, worth doing, 
is going to be hard. Yeah, Lewis says, it, it's wonderful what you can do when you have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just consider the four minute mile. For the longest time, it was thought that the human body cannot move that quickly. Yeah. You cannot get a human body across a mile in under four minutes. And that idea was so set in people's minds that nobody could. But as soon as somebody did it, as soon as somebody showed that it was possible, then somebody broke it again and again and again. And now, I wanna say we're 15 seconds past that. Like we've broken it by a good bit. So chastity is hard, but it's not impossible. And honestly, if I can't say no to something, what is my yes even worth? It is amazing what can be done with the grace of God. Mm -hmm. When we understand that it's possible in anything is possible with the grace of God, and when we want it, when we understand that chastity is a beautiful thing, who doesn't want to love fully? It is such a beautiful gift, and it allows us to love freely. And God is gonna give us that grace, e even if it's just the grace to pick ourselves back up after we fail. That's so true. No, to chastity. To chastity. We wanna thank you for watching this. David and I are incredibly passionate about the Christian faith. In our journey, we found there to be such truth and beauty in it. And if there's anything you disagree with, if there's anything you're struggling with that we just haven't talked about, we invite you to share that in the comments and we would love the opportunity to address that, to do a video on it. Because if you're struggling with it, probably others are. And if you are an excellent sort of person uh, who wants to go to heaven, please share this link. <laughs> it's that simple. We that, offer you heaven that for easy. very cheap. Uh, but seriously, if you found one of our videos helpful, if it has helped you grow in your love and understanding of Christianity or C.S. Lewis, please share it with your friends. See you next time. Further up. Further in. Cheers. <laughs>